two remain. One cup remains. Who will reign supreme? Boston versus Chicago. Whitey Bulger versus Al Capone. Boston Beans versus Chicago style pizza. But more importantly, two original six franchises meet in the finals for the first time since 1979 when Scotty Bowman, the legendary coach and machine behind the bench, he led Montreal to a 41 series win over the New York Rangers. That was tough even though I wasn't alive. But this is very, very, very important for each and every one of us here, especially folks of my generation. Because it's the first time, and it may be the last time, that an original six, two original six franchises will meet in the finals. This hasn't happened. I've been waiting since 1979 for this in my previous life when I was uh, Peter uh, Stevens. I was a big hockey fan in my other life. And now it's going to happen. This is going to be very special for me. It should be very special for each and every one of you people in my generation. And the funny thing is, these two historic teams, even though they're original six, they never met in the finals before. It's going to be the first time they will meet in the Stanley Cup Finals. As you know, my name is Smythe, and we are here for another edition of What the... For another edition of What the Puck, one of the final ones of the season. I may do a couple shows after this, covering coaches and all that stuff. The carousel continues, but what I want to do now is focus on this. These two clubs going at it. How in God's name can you pick a winner in this series? They're evenly matched all the way down. Boston might have the advantage in the goaltending. I don't know, you see this? This will determine who I will uh, pick to win the Stanley Cup Finals in 2013. Is that close? We'll get to that in a minute. Now, Sidney Crosby has been in the league for, what, since 2006, when I was a senior in high school? So that's, what, seven years now? And to me, he hasn't changed, and he hasn't aged one stinking bit. If you noticed in Game 1 or Game 2, Pittsburgh and Boston, he was up to his old stuff. Put it nicely, uh, you know, after the period, he bumped Tuka Rash. And then, you know, he was so tough when the, when the referee was right here. You had Crosby down here. I'm such a punk. I'm going to take on everybody. I'm going to bitch and complain. Nothing goes my way. You had him versus Chara. You know, I'm going to take you down anytime you want. I'm going to win the Stanley Cup again. And when I do, I'm going to go, no! You had him and Crosby right next to each other, and the zebra was right between them, and Crosby was like, come on, come on, he was shoving him, provoking him, come on, come and get me, I dare you, what are you going to do, I'm Gary Bettman's daughter, what do you think you're going to do to me, come on, come on. He also turned around and slashed uh, Tyler Sagan when he was on the ice, he cross-checked Yarmor Yager later on in the series, I say the guy is an absolute disgrace, you cannot be doing that kind of stuff out there on the ice, especially in the playoffs. I don't know how this guy is the face of the league. You know, no one's got the balls to stand up and really criticize this guy because they're afraid they'll get, you know, torn and feathered by Gary Bettman. He hasn't changed one bit. His team sucked. He sucked. Monken sucked. Fury sucked. And he didn't do a damn thing about it. He's a whiny, selfish little bitch. That's what he is. And I don't see him changing anytime soon unless Danny Biles, if he still has a job, which I think he will, sits down and talks to him. Doesn't change anything. Now, break it down. Break it down. We got the uh, Bruins. We got the Blackhawks. This is unbelievable, folks. First time, like I said, since 1979, two original six uh, have um, met in the finals. 1979, Montreal won. Now the Boston Bruins, who swept the top seed, the Pittsburgh Penguins, to win the Eastern Conference title. They'll be in the original six uh, rivalry. The Bruins won the Cup uh, against Vancouver in 11, succeeding the Blackhawks, who defeated the Philadelphia Flyers back in 2010. This will be the seventh time the teams have met in the playoffs, and the first since the a, a four-game sweep by the Bruins in 78. Again, first time in the finals, and the first West and East matchup 
of the season due to the ridiculous lockout we had to endure earlier earlier on uh, in the season. By the way, if you were to ask me, my predictions always seem to be way off, which is why I'm going to let fate decide here momentarily on what the puck. Um, if you would have told me that Boston would have sweeped number one Pittsburgh in the conference finals this year, I would have looked at you like you were a Martian transvestite, okay? Because there was no way anyone saw this coming, but Boston is better, was better, and Pittsburgh was not. It's, it, comes, it basically comes down to that in every facet of the game. That's my expert in-depth um, analysis. Uh, now, the Blackhawks finished 15 points ahead of the Bruins as they're the number one seed. Boston's number four in the East. Each survived a seven-game uh, scare earlier on in the series. Boston against Toronto and Chicago against the original six Detroit uh, rivals. Now, let's break it down. Let's physically dissect this series, starting with the forwards uh, for the Chicago Blackhawks. Joe Quenville has done an amazing job moving guys around from here to there, here, there, here, there, here, there, everywhere possible to make things uh, uh, work. You got Jonathan Tays been okay, really. Martin Hosa, uh, Patrick Kane, and Patrick Sharp. Uh, they've been moving around a little bit. Kane had a hat trick in the conference final game on Saturday night to put them into the finals. Then you got other guys, the supporting cast. You got guys. Both teams really don't have one solid goal scorer. They got a bunch, all right? You got Brian Bickles, tough on the third uh, line down there. Even Michael Hansus, the former king, former flyer, the man they call Zeus, is producing uh, uh, very, very well at the number two center. Andrew Shaw and Victor Stahlberg, that have been great. I mean, you know, each one of these guys can score, okay? And you look for Kane since he's got three in a row. He's got something going here. You know, maybe they'll carry over. I don't know how it works. Now, Boston you got a defensive first team, but that doesn't matter, again, because they score goals throughout their lineup. They have the most goals of any team in this tournament. They don't really have a star. Neither does Chicago. This is why this is going to be a tight series, I think. you got David Krejci, 21 points in 16 games. Uh, he scored uh, several big goals, like his series opening strike against the Penguins. you got Patrice Bergeron, defensive uh, whiz, kind of. But, uh, you know, he also scores the clutch goal after clutch goal. Nathan Norton has 17 points. Milan Lucic has been a beast. Uh, 13 points. Brad the Weasel Marchand uh, on Bergeron's line. 13 points. Yammer Yager doesn't really have a goal yet in the playoffs, but he has been the most, um, the, mo the, the one of the best guys to contribute without scoring a goal. He's been setting up plays. He's still one of the best skaters in the world, I think. And he's 41 years old, and I think if he wins a cup right now, he'll retire in style, which will piss Pittsburgh fans off even more. I have a love hate, hate relationship with the uh, with Pittsburgh. I love love the Steelers, diehard Steelers fan. Love them, They're the best old school football, yada yada. But on the other side, I hate the Penguins, and yet I'm a Rangers fan. Try to connect the dots, if you will. I certainly can't. Uh, you know what I mean? At least not when I'm sober. Now. Okay, we got Milan Lucic. He's been an absolute wrecking ball as usual. The Bruins did lose Gregory Campbell because of a broken leg. And let me tell you something. That is one of the toughest sons of bitches I have ever seen in my life. You go out there and you block a shot and you break your leg. Did he stay down? No. Did he try to crawl back to the bench? No. He got back up. He finished his shift, which was, by the way, over a minute. And he got to his bench with dignity, with pride, and with honor. And those Boston Bruins fans, the blue-collar fans that they are, great city, great fans, they appreciated that more than anything else. That was absolutely phenomenal. The guys got stones as big as concrete walls. Okay? Absolutely unbelievable. Don't miss him uh, for the Bruins. Now, Duncan Keith is the best defenseman in the league right now. Even better than Zdeno Chara. He's faster. He contributes more offensively. He shoots the puck more. Uh, but it's going to be a good matchup to see Keith and Chara go at it. Um, he did miss a game for that suspension, for that high stick on, uh, what's his face, uh, Jeff Carter there. But Carter slashed him first. So it should even out in the end, shouldn't it? I don't know. Michael Roosevelt, the former Ranger who sucked in New York, hated him. I was actually in the tunnel once when they came out for warm-ups and some dude went up to him right to his face and went, You suck, Roosevelt! Right to his face. This was a Rangers fan. I never liked him, but I wouldn't do anything like that. Uh, Burns Seabook struggled, the, struggled in, the first in the first round against, uh, the second round against the Trippies come back. 
You got Nikos uh, Charmelson, one of the most overlooked defensemen for the Blackhawks. Deserves more credit uh, for being the number three guy. Now, for Boston, they've allowed fewer than two goals per game. Zdeno Chara might be the best defenseman for the Bruins. He's not the best in the league, in my opinion. Duncan Keith has shown me more, but hey, it'll be seven games for them to show me otherwise. Uh, he held the Penguins to two goals in the conference final. That's amazing with, the, with those guys they have there. Chara's partner, Seidenberg, is among the most underrated defensemen in the game. Andrew Ference is back, uh, which was important for the Bruins because it evened the pairs again and allowed uh, Claude Julien really to match his second pairing. Johnny Boychek, Adam McQuaid are physical on the, on the blue line. McQuaid had the goal in, uh, what the hell was it? I forget what game it was, but he had a playoff goal. And uh, Toy Krug has been on the power play. Now, kid has been promoted to the power play, one of the best teams in the league at 19 years of age. Can't even drink, although he probably does anyway, right? But, hey, good for him. Boston has 15 goals from its defenders, all right? 15 goals from their defensemen. You talk about a well-rounded team, Boston, 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 Chicago. I think Boston's a little bit more well-rounded. Look at the goals they're getting from the defense. Unbelievable. Now, Goalies. Corey Crawford, big guy, uses his pads. Woo! Woo! Uses his pads a lot to his advantage, makes some key stops. He's been a breakout guy of the year. Ray Emery stole his backup. But you know what? If anything happens to Crawford, God forbid, Emery will step in there and do a great job, uh, I think. Now you got this little gentleman on the other side of the ice who hails from Finland. His name is Tuka Rask. And what can you say about Tuka Rask? I was calling him Tuka Rash. Now I have respect for him. I'm going to drop that moniker. Tuka, 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 Tuka time. Tuka Rask. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Against Pittsburgh, he stopped 134 of 136 shots for an almost inconceivable .985 save percentage. He had two shutouts in the series and allowed one goal in the final two games. His quick glove save against Jerome McGinley at the buzzer of Game 4 will be on highlight reels for years to come. Rask's numbers, 12-4 and 4 record, point, or excuse me, one, uh, 1 1.75 goals against average and .948 save percentage are better than those of Thomas, Tim Thomas after three rounds in 0 in 2011. I'm not comparing the two. I don't think it's fair, but hey, stats are stats and the stats do not lie. Now, Coaches, you got Joe Quinville. He, he made several key adjustments. This guy's the master of making adjustments on the fly and putting the right personnel out there. With Chicago trailing 3-1 to one in the conference finals against Detroit, the conference semifinals, he reunited Brent Seapook with Duncan Keith as the top defensive pair. He gave uh, Roosevelt extra ice time when Keith was suspended. Roosevelt did a hell of a job, in my opinion, and he answered with a strong game. He put Taves and Kane and Bickle in the second period of Game 4 against L.A., and they scored the game-tying goal on their second shift as their line. What a way to see off that wonderful line that Joel Quinville has created. Now, the coach for the Boston Bruins, Claude Julien, they've won seven of the past eight playoff series under his reign. Phenomenal. Julien has allowed his grinders to play against the top lines from other teams, i.e., uh, that fourth line was shortened against the Ra uh, Thornton against the Rangers. They killed them, killed them. Still trying to get over that. Um, showing the Boston, showing the entire Boston lineup that they can get quality ice time. He gets the matchups he wants. The defenseman that he has out there, they get more than his forwards in matching situations. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Now, special team. Chicago had the best penalty kill in the Western Conference during the regular season. 87.2%. It has been more. 94.8% of the playoffs. Penalty kill, 55, 58 through 178 games. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, Froelich and Kruger are arguably the best uh, forward duo in shorthanded situations. Chicago is connected on 13.7% of its power play in the playoffs. Boston, 0-4 ever in the series against uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, but it didn't have to be. The scoring at even strength, so who gives a, who gives a shit, right? Uh, Boston is, ex is excelling, one down a man, advantage 15 times at the conference final, didn't score a goal, uh, the kill is anchored by Seidenberg and Chara. Got anything else for you? No, I do not. Now, I've been thinking this through all week and all weekend long, and I decided the only way to pick a winner in the Stanley Cup Finals between the Boston Bruins 
and the Chicago Blackhawks. Look at those logos, by the way. Let me zoom in. Look at that. Two historic logos representing hockey, representing the NHL. I love it. So the only way to pick a winner is to let fate decide. Heads are the Bruins. Tails are the Blackhawks. Let's see what my prediction will be. And it will be Tails. Sorry, Boston fans. Chicago Blackhawks will win this series in their second Stanley Cup uh, recently. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it. I I'm going to say they're, they're going to go seven games. They have to go seven games. But I think Chicago uh, will get it done. they got uh, more more defined goal scorers. They're a well-rounded team, but they got more defined goal scorers than uh, Boston. And Rask can't keep this up all the time. He's been great, but he can't keep this up uh, all the time. We saw Jonathan Quick. He kind of uh, melted a little bit there. All these good streaks have to come to an end, and I think in the Stanley Cup Final, Chicago will end Tuka Rask's phenomenal performance. He does deserve the Consumite Trophy. I don't care what happens. Uh, I believe he deserves the Consumite Trophy, but I'm picking these guys and the Chelsea Dagger cheering fans to win the Stanley Cup. That's going to do it for me. I am Face Wash Smythe. I'll be back. Enjoy the Stanley Cup Finals. This has been another edition of What the Puck. Like I said, I'll do a couple episodes maybe, depending on what happens with the Rangers and their coaching situation. It's a huge carousel going round and round and round. Wee! So we'll see what happens after that. Enjoy the Stanley Cup Finals. It is going to be awesome. Peace, everybody.